Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. Sri Kumar Kandan joins me and we take a look at the southern states of India, how things are heating up. We may not have all states information. Some have solidified and we're going to touch upon those in the next episode. We will touch whichever ones that we miss. So let's welcome Sri Kumar Kandan. Sri Kumar, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram, sir. How are you? I am doing well, Sri Kumar. So let us start with Tamil Nadu. And viewers, you've heard from Sri Ram Seshadri a lot of things. We have, in fact, predicted, I think, best case scenario is, I'll give you these numbers. Best case scenario, we are adding Pondicherry also, so that the number comes to a nice and round 40, right? So we think that it is going to be best case three-way split, worst case about 10 for uh, NDA, and the others will get, uh, you know, 10 and 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 so on we are we we only looked at the 24 that are contesting under the bjp symbol and there we we kind of thought it was going to be 8 8 and 8 so that means out of the 24 eight are sure shot for bjp eight are they are doable if they do a lot of work and eight are very very difficult to win so this is just chances of bjp right so now I'm hoping that you can throw your light. You you look at it in a very different way. You are data-driven, much more scientific. You probably can see things that we cannot. So I'm going to cede the floor to you. Let's start from Tamil Nadu. Over to you. Thank you, uh, viewers of uh, P Gurus. Now the things uh, are getting heated up. The elections are around the corner. And uh, especially for the South India is concerned, uh, Tamil Nadu goes in for the first phase of elections. And there are totally 39 plus one seat, 39 for Tamil Nadu and one for Puducherry. So put together 40 seats. In the 40 seats, we are seeing uh, DMK Front also completed their uh, side of seat sharing. Candidates are announced. The ADMK also did their part of a seat sharing candidates announced and also uh, BJP. So what is interesting now as far as uh, this election is concerned? BJP, for the first time, they have taken this election very seriously. The central BJP leadership, they have taken the uh, elections very seriously, unlike the last uh, few times. Meaning, uh, usually they become a part of a DMK or ADMK alliance. So far, they use only that, uh, uh, that proposal. Now, BJP has uh, formed its own alliance and it is leading its alliance, unlike 2014. 2014, it was a part of a old alliance, like uh, DMDK was having the major share, uh, other parties were there, but BJP was leading or uh, contesting only seven seats. Now, BJP is contesting around 19 seats in its own uh, symbol, uh, it, its own candidates are there. Other friendly people are there in some seats, and 10 seats to PMK, and uh, two seats to Dinakaran's party, three seats to GK Vasan's uh, Tamil Manila Congress. This is a broader understanding. In this, what's special about this time? BJP has is contesting in almost all cities. If you see in uh, uh, three Chennai constituencies, it is contesting in uh, Coimbatore. It is uh, contesting in Madurai. It is contesting in uh, Tamil uh, so South uh, Tamil Nadu. Those places it is contesting. Trichy. Of course, it has given it to Alai uh, Dinagaran's party and Salem, I believe, it has given to PMK. So, uh, this is uh, a broader seat sharing arrangements. As far as the uh, winnability is concerned, still I am working on it, I should say. But considering the uh, uh, party as well as the candidates which are being announced, BJP, as Mr. Shriyayar mentioned, it is uh, very much in a very good fighting position. In around 10 to 15 seats, uh, I, I must say BJP and its allies in tools PMK, Dinakaran's party, uh, OPS contesting in Ramanathapuram, and uh, Tamil Manila Congress put together. They are in good striking rate into 10 to 15 seats. Now, this 15 seats, uh, I'm sorry, in this 15 seats, um, we, we went into a little bit more depth. Uh, with uh, Sriram Seshadri, and uh, we kind of said that eight are doable, eight are marginal. Now, tell me come of, some of the marquee contests, Coimbatore, Chennai South, 
um, um, Tenkasi, for example. Because in Tenkasi, what is happening is you have two stalwarts from Devendra Kulavelalar going up one against the other. I was expecting Dr. Krishna Swami to be part of the NDA, and he is not. He's instead gone with ADMK. From a political point of view, don't you think that was a little bit of uh, political suicide for him? What are your thoughts? Yes, sir. Actually, I feel so because uh, in the BJP alliance is concerned, what I see is there were a number of adjustments which has taken place. For example, as you rightly mentioned, Tenkasi, uh, BJP planned it for its own candidate, Tenkasi Anandan. For that reason, it has uh, not accommodated Pudhiya uh, Tamilham Krishna Swami. Now, what has happened? The BJP was not able to give the uh, candidature to Tenkasi Anandan. So, John Pandian, another uh, allied party, was, a, was accommodated. Similarly, uh, Professor uh, Ramashini Vasan, who was planned for Virudhanagar seat, he was then planned for Trichy. Then he is later accommodated in Madurai. So that Virudhanagar seat was given to Radhika, who has joined the BJP party recently. Similarly, Ramanathapuram is originally meant for BJP, and Madurai was planned for OPS. Now, OPS is moved to Ramanathapuram, and BJP Ramana, Rama Srinivasan is contesting Madurai. So, these type of uh, adjustments are being taking place. What I uh, personally feel is there are some seats where the BJP is having a, a good position. Like uh, we have uh, uh, Coimbatore is there, we have Trinalveli, we have Vellur, we have uh, Ramanathapuram, uh, we have Teni. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, Kanyakumari. Though Mr. Shriram Sheshadri is uh, uh, not giving ten, uh, Kanyakumari seats to BJP, uh, I am a little bit uh, uh, okay for uh, giving ten, uh, Kanyakumari to BJP for a simple reason: uh, the two other candidates of ADMK and Nam Tamil, they have provided a fisherman community candidates. Two candidates are being provided. So if in the vote split. BJP can sail through in uh, Kanyakumari, Konrad Action. So these are some of the seats. South Chennai, it is only a fighting chance. As Mr. Sriram Sheshadri, I also concur with him. BJP can best fight for the third position, though it, it cannot uh, come for a other second or because there are two others are very strong candidates. Madurai, it can have a good fighting position because of the socio demographic. Uh, um, style there because Madurai has always voted for a national party. There are only two occasions in 2009 and 2014, Dravidian parties were elected. 2009, Alagiri was elected from Madurai, 2014, ADMK candidates. Other than that, it has always voted for uh, Congress, even Janta Party, Dr. Subramanya Swami got elected from Madurai in 1998 as well as communist in 1999 also, 2019 also. So these are the some of the broader uh, seats. Now, uh, as you rightly mentioned, Pudhiya Tamadaham Krishna Swami should have stayed with BJP. Now moving to uh, ADMK front, that is also sharing an alliance with SDPI. It is going to be a political suicide for him. That's, that is also, I feel so. I also agree with you on this issue. Now let's let's take a look at critical look at the candidacy of sorry uh, what's her name uh, actress Radhika Sarat Kumar. I mean, if if really it was her star drawing power, don't you think she could have drawn more power if she was contesting from Madurai and let Professor Rama Srinivasan contest from Virudhanagar, where he has nurtured that constituency. He has put together the Devendra Pulavelalar into the BJP fold. He worked tirelessly for years. Why give him this difficult constituency? Isn't it like snatching defeat from the jaws of victory? No, sir. I see it in a different angle. Virudhanagar is actually a difficult street for Mr. Ramashani Vasan. What prompted Mr. Ramashani Vasan to go for Virudhanagar was, he thought that BJP will be going for an alliance with AADMK. AADMK being the large party of the alliance, they will not part with Madurai. Actually, his first preference could have been Madurai because Madurai is his home, home uh, town. 
but he thought bjp uh, admk will not part with madurai because of it is a large party as one time or uh, one side and it has a uh, big leaders in admk like rajan chellappa was there uday kumar was there so many leaders were there they will not part with madurai with bjp so he wanted to move to a safer seat which admk cannot deny that is what his initial plan could be so he moved to virudhunagar now virudhunagar has one unique cast uh, calculus equation it yeah. has uh, nadars it has mukulathos it has linguistic minorities these three are there and we should also understand that uh, all the three does not share very good rapport with each other that they should they though they they, 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 they will not share that much harmonious relationship with each other each other as far as political candidature is concerned so if uh, mr ramasheni vasan does not belong to any of the three uh, he he belongs to the linguistic minorities but he does not belong to that uh, naikar community so he belongs to the reddiar community so uh, naikar community mukulathor and nadars they are the main voting base of rudhunagar now what makes it easier for radhika radhika belongs to the linguistic minorities by her birth and she has married sharad kumar who is a nadar so two activities are satisfied there and the third activity is mukulato who are supported by dinakaran as well as ops so this all the three helps radhika's candidature in virudhunagar suppose if ramashrinivasan could have been the candidate then what will happen is he planned for admk alliance if admk alliance is there dinakaran and ops could not be there could not be accommodated so that mukulato communities vote uh, support will be missing so this is uh, best possible way i can see uh, for radhika because another thing is she does not she is a household name uh, for uh, any of the uh, uh, voters of uh, uh, virudhunagar she is a household name so uh, though mr ramshrinivasan has nurtured the constituency i agree but radhika will not be a less popular candidate in that seat and uh, i believe because considering there is one manik takur is there of congress party on one side and uh, relatively uh, vijayakanth's son has been given the candidature from the dmdk quota so radhika has a fairly fighting chance in virudhunagar thank you so much i mean we have these uh, differences in perspective and that's what gives it a very interesting con- uh, conversation question for you many places where people were questioning why this particular candidate the answer given was that there was no better candidate than this i kind of completely disagree with that view point it, it see bjp had nothing to lose from 2019 they could have earmarked some very powerful strong go getters and said you nurture this constituency no matter what you are going to contest from there so so in such cases see i i question the need for dr tamirisai saundar rajan to get out of a gubernatorial position see governors are supposed to be politically neutral these things like these these don't good look good in terms of optics as a democratic party and and i completely you know uh, don't, don't like this thing that people who have been you know governors have given up that and come back and they come, jump back into active politics this is not on so anyway this is i uh, maybe i people may say you are too old that's why this is happening but that is my first reservation second reservation what does ponna understand to gain he was minister of state for two terms 2014 to 2019 or uh, maybe not two terms but 2014 for five years he was a, uh, a minister He, he was a lone uh, BJP MP to get elected in 2014 from Tamil Nadu. That gave him the ministership. He enjoyed that thing for five years. He had two different ministries. What more can a man want? What is the need for him to go back and contest? Could have, could there have been a better candidate? Just that specific Kanyakumari constituency, because there is so much polarization there. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, he had also the same uh, thought, which I also. Uh, cross checked with mr jvc shriram i should say even uh, today only i have cross checked those details 
according to him he has one criss crossed the uh, kanyakumari constituency the two or three things uh, what he also observed what i also agree uh, one is uh, there is uh, no tall leaders in kanyakumari at present comparing with pondrada krishnan though others are there in waiting pondrada krishnan still has uh, uh, what to say the cross sectional appeal of kanyakumari the reason being he is not the minister once he is a minister twice 1999 to 2004 he was elected and then 2014 to 2019 he was elected so two times he was also mos one time in vajpayee's cabinet one time in mother modi's cabinet second thing is uh, it is a highly polarized constituency comparing with other constituencies all over tamil nadu this is one such constituency where there is a clash of national parties comparing with any regional parties it could be either bjp on one side congress and communist on the other side so what is the speciality about the pondrada krishnan is though he may be uh, unpopular until election date but when there is a course of election there is no other person who can fill in his shoes that is uh, what to say unpopular reality so and uh, that is one point and the cadres though they were uh, having some uh, bitter feelings or you can say there is some dissatisfaction with uh, mr pondrada krishnan this time i feel they are pulling up their socks and uh, to get the seats even some other community people also they are planning to vote for uh, bjp this time for a simple reason they want uh, the national highways to be developed in kanyakumari they want some projects like airports and railway ports to be brought into kanyakumari I mean railway railway expansion they want to, to make some industrial development they want so because they feel it is mostly shared from the kerala side and it has stopped with the thoothukodi even if they go to airport also they have to go to thoothukodi that is the nearest airport for kanyakumari people so what they feel is in the they looking at the bright bright uh, opportunity of uh, modi coming back to power voting for pondrada krishnan will deliver these uh, facilities for the constituency that is a major reason what they personally feel and as far as the governor role is concerned as you mentioned there are i also personally feel the governor's uh, position should be a one way traffic when a politician retires and occupies the post of the governor then uh, he should do justification to that governor he may retire from the governor's post and he may lead a public life without entering the political active politics that is also i that is what i also personally feel i it was a strange thing to me when mr sam krishna who was a maharashtra governor who returned back to politics and in 2009 he was made as a minister that was the first instance after a very long time in my limited political knowledge who has uh, made this u turn then it became a president for the other bjp people also as i mentioned that baby rani maurya she also entered the political arena now tamilisai soundarajan the problem with tamilisai soundarajan is even during her governor's position she was kept the politics boiling she was giving the constant political statements which is unbecoming of a governor a governor's position is a constitutional position and they have to take a constitutional stand they should refrain themselves in giving political statements making political observations commenting on other states political politics uh, interference they should they should refrain them from so but what uh, tamilisai soundarajan did was she always interfered in the political happenings and giving running commentary about tamil nadu politics so this was very unbecoming of a governor's role and better it is if the politics is her cup of tea let her resign that job and come to the governor uh, active politics hope that she doesn't become a governor again and make a, you know a mockery of this system in the future in fact i would go so far to say even speaker of uh, any state assembly once you become a state speaker and and in the parliament 
you should not be contesting in politics after that you have gotten to an exalted position where you are supposed to be able to listen to both sides and come up with decisions and and anyway so this is this is just mockery of democracy we'll leave it at that because we have a lot more to cover viewers if you have not liked this video please like it we are now going to take a look at telangana because telangana we have a little bit more definition about the candidates the matchups and so on and so forth we are still awaiting data about karnataka as well as andhra pradesh so we may not be able to touch upon it a lot and and kerala also will have a little bit of input first let's take a look at telangana over to you yes actually as you mentioned sir because andhra pradesh uh, there are about six seats which are given to bjp candidates are uh, still awaited i am also eagerly awaiting because i thought today they will be announcing and so far i have not received the uh, press communication i have not seen that similarly in karnataka also they have given three seats to uh, jds as a part of the pact uh, mandya kolar as well as hasan so these three seats are given to uh, jds remaining 25 seats bjp is contesting so we have to wait for the next set of seats as far as telangana uh, telangana they have announced the most of the seats uh, most of the seats i should say they have repeated the old people like mandi uh, uh, sanjay is contesting uh, similarly uh, uh, i should say dk uh, aruna uh, 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 yes kishan reddy is contesting in uh, secunderabad as well as uh, nizamabad is it and one more person is uh, this uh, dk aruna she is contesting from mahbub nagar so these are the uh, uh, some of the candidates which are repeated in the past they are contesting in the present time what bjp's plan for telangana could be from the last time they won four seats uh, secunderabad adilabad karim nagar nizamabad they wanted to increase maximum 7 to 8 seats that's what uh, their plan could be but the problem here is congress is also in an advantageous position because uh, they have just come into power and there is a complete collapse of brs uh, the brs have uh, been squeezed out of the politics in telangana which was very fast that evaporated like anything even very fast than anyone could have expected so what a person like me thought was uh, bjp brs and congress will have an equal uh, political future brs will fade away in the days to come but what has really happened was brs faded away much faster than anyone could have expected so it is a direct fight between congress and uh, bjp in the the people of telangana has one advantage towards bjp is they are also very sure that bjp is going to come back to power uh, this time so their voting pattern could slightly differ giving some advantage to bjp uh, comparing with congress who is standing in malkajgiri from bjp uh, malkajgiri i have to yet to see sir because they have announced the candidate but he is not that much a popular candidate uh, uh, they have given to uh, itla rajendra sorry Yes, Malkajgiri. Malkajgiri. yes he is more strong in the northern part he is stronger in the adilabad that area i thought why did they give him here i don't know that's very uh, see Mal- actually murlidhar rao murlidhar rao was uh, eyeing for that constituency that uh, uh, rss uh, ideologue person who is a uh, general secretary of the bjp for a long time uh, murlidhar rao was uh, planning for malkajgiri Uh, even i was surprised that uh, it was given to itla rajin well between the two i would say itala is probably a better candidate but the thing about that is that is the most urban constituency in the whole of india the average voter has a bachelor's degree you don't find such constituencies in india very rarity although it doesn't seem to have any intellectual bent when it comes to elections it seems to vote with the trends and waves what are whatever is there but it's a very un- interesting and it's very close to secunderabad it's in fact adjoining secunderabad much of the city of secunderabad not hyderabad secunderabad uh, has malkajgiri in it so very interesting we'll have to wait and see how that plays out so you think that it is realistic that uh, bjp might get 8 out of the 17 in telangana 
Yes, it's possible because last time itself they count, they won about uh, four seats. Now they can capture yeah. their hope in some of the seats like, uh, as you said, Malkajigiri. They can hope for Mahbub Nagar. In another one or two seats, they can plan. But uh, there are some difficult seats like uh, Bongir is there, Medak is there, those uh, Hyderabad is there. Those are difficult seats. Uh, we have to wait and see because the real problem with the uh, BJP is the structurally giving full uh, fight. If it is a three cornered fight, BJP can fare better uh, because its vote will be intact. On the other hand, uh, BRS and Congress. Uh, anti-BJP votes will get split and BJP can get through in some of the seats. But here what the problem is a complete meltdown of uh, BRS. That was, uh, uh, we don't know how this vote will go. If the BRS votes meltdown and it votes completely with Congress, then it will be difficult for BJP to get more seats. And if it is shared between both Congress and BJP, then in some seats BJP can get through. That is the present situation. Question for you regarding uh, Annamalai and uh, then we'll go to Kerala. One question for you regarding Annamalai. See, there is uh, there is like a halo effect. For example, in 2019, because Rahul Gandhi contested from Vayanad, the uh, United Democratic Front that has Congress as the lead partner, they swept, I think they won almost all or all but one or something like that, or the 20 seats in Kerala. Now, do you think that with Annamalai contesting from Coimbatore, the adjoining constituencies such as Pollachi, uh, even Palakkad, because Palakkad is right across Coimbatore, and that's where uh, actor is, uh, is contesting on BJP ticket, and 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 also Tirupur and a uh, couple of other uh, you know Kongu Nadu constituencies. Do you think there could be a push in favor of the BJP in these constituencies? Yes, I feel so because uh, many of the people who didn't share my idea that uh, uh, Anamalai should contest. What they thought was Anamalai contesting, if he is defeated and it will uh, it will shadow his political future, people think in that way. I see it in a different way. So irrespective of the result, it is necessary for a leader to test his politics and his, his ability in a democracy in every time and then. Otherwise, what will happen? See, for example, he entered politics in 2020, uh, the 20 and the 21 beginning, I should say. Only one time in Arvakurchi, he tested his uh, politics. That was uh, his hometown, where due to demographic issue, uh, he was not successful. Then till 2026, if he has to wait, then it is a long wait, I should say. Yes, sir, please. He took revenge on EPS for that Aravakuruchi defeat, in my opinion. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I, yes, I also agree. So, what uh, the advantage of anomaly contesting an election in Lok Sabha is, it will first project him as a serious political leader. It will not make him as a person who is dodging any political challenge. Third, as Mr. Shriya rightly mentioned, it will give a ripple effect in adjoining constituencies, say Tirupu, say Namakkal, say Pollachi, uh, and other Kongu areas on one hand, and also the adjoining Palakkad on the other. And Coimbatore is a, a comparatively an urban constituency next to Chennai. So it has industries on one side, it has a good intellectual people on the other side, it has workforce there and it has student power is there. So it is an elite constituency also on one side. So it is, and also it has a, a Cosmo uh, demography. It has all sections of society who are there in uh, Coimbatore. So it will be easy, it will be suitable for a person like Anamalai to test his politics in Coimbatore. And it, this setup should continue until 2026. Because what we should see it as, if Annamalai refrains himself in contesting, then what will happen is it will cast a shadow on the BJP on its seriousness about this election. A person who's, who is the leader of the alliance or a party should lead from its front, irrespective of the result. We have seen even Arun Jaitley losing from uh, Amritsar. 
but that doesn't stop him to become any minister or so and Who became somebody who ministries <laughs> yes from corporate affairs as well as finance and even uh, somebody or some people are saying that if he becomes an mp what about his state presidency there are so many people of bjp who were also mps and also continuing as a state leadership state presidency they were there for example nalin katti who was the ex president of karnataka he was an mp sukanta majumdar who was a bengal bjp president state president he was also a mp bandi sanjay until kishan reddy he was also an mp so becoming an mp does not stop see for example cr patil gujarat chief, gujarat bjp chief he is also an mp so being an mp does not stop anyone uh, heading a state unit so that argument is not uh, that argument is actually uh, not in a right sense so uh, he can become he can be an mp he can prove himself as a good political uh, uh, what to say uh, a serious politician he can take it forward to 2026 he can burst the myth that uh, bjp has uh, no space for tamil nadu so becoming a candidate will give more advantages than disadvantages you know uh, i can't but help uh... spare a thought for kenkasi anandan because this person has worked in the west he has worked in intel if i remember correctly for several years very qualified engineer he has put his all into this constituency he worked day and night for years and then finally he doesn't get the ticket i mean it's these are the kind of intellectuals that you want in the parliament asking the hard questions getting the hard answers providing the solutions for the country and and somehow i feel that in this calculus somebody who has got that talent and he has shown that he can do a lot of work has now been sidelined because of some caste equations i think india needs to rid rid itself of these things or at least maybe he should come in be brought in as a rajya sabha member i feel like you know some people who have that sheer caliber they need to be uh, recognized even even engineer sridharan you know who narrowly lost in uh, palakkad last time i mean what what kind of thinking do palakkadites think this man has provided india with so many metros all of them such beautiful trains you know if i can i usually take the metro it's not that i can't afford a, a cab i get i take the metro because i can arrive at a place on time that is the biggest plus for a metro being used and and you know that's just me what i'm saying is that somewhere along the line this calculus you know doesn't reward the real true hard working people uh, who should have been uh, uh, contestants there now let's take a look at kerala kerala last time i think we talked about three places where their bjp had a, a fighting chance one was palakkad suresh gopi pattanam titta where i think anil antony is standing and the third one was i think tiruvananthapuram if i remember correctly there may be some other things that are coming up give us a picture of what is happening in kerala there is a constituency alappuzha where shobha surendran is contesting she is also a good candidate people are saying what in the kerala bjp is planning is to increase its vote share and also hope for getting one or two seats that is a basic thing opening an account in kerala was its prime uh, is its prime objective presently uh, they don't uh, want to be, have anything uh, very dramatic change as far as kerala because we all remember uh, after a very very long time for the first time in uh, 16 assembly elections in kerala bjp got its first mla mr o rajagopal uh, from uh, nemam uh, constituency he he was the first bjp mla elected mla entering kerala assembly so i think he is the only person ever BJP elected from kerala no no i think he is the only person ever elected from yes. kerala nobody else has been elected from kerala from yes. bjp ticket <laughs> go ahead nobody was elected yes so uh, there are some seats as you mentioned attingal of muralidharan alappuzha shobha surendran uh, tiruvananthapuram uh, rajiv chandrashekar patanam uh, titta by anil antony trishur by suresh gopi these are some of the uh, five seats and even palakkad but palakkad and other places 
they are not that much uh, uh, given importance because of the past uh, electoral records we need to wait and see but these are the five seats where bjp would like to see the vote position uh, seats are concerned we need to check patanam titta trishur trivanandapuram still very difficult i feel so i'm sorry i think i said palakkad for suresh gopi i think it is uh, uh, suresh gopi is standing from trishur but you know if you trishur constituency mm-hmm. also has guruvayur correct correct So, Guruvayur viewers, you will be amazed to know the city of or the town of Guruvayur has this very famous Guruvayurappan temple, Lord Krishna. But the population is ninety percent Muslim, ninety nine zero. Even the shopkeepers, they may. It's a very different constituency, and I don't know. Uh, of course, this is just one part, Guruvayur alone. and there are lots of temples that are not just the krishna temple you can you can take about half a day you can spend going through various temples in guruvai area beautiful shiva temples very um, excellent holy place but in terms of winnability what do you think suresh gopi needs to do to rise beyond all these you know they have this cross voting uh, record and they they pride themselves that you know one front versus the other no room for bjp It doesn't matter how many percentage votes it polls do you think suresh gopi will be able to break that uh, that arrangement tacit arrangement that the two fronts have yes can you hear me i feel so yeah hmm uh yes i can i can hear you because suresh gopi i feel so because of the two reasons one is his cross sectional appeal of uh, trishur lok sabha constituency and second thing he is not new to the constituency he also contested in uh, 2019 so uh, he is like uh, a person like smriti irani who is continuously visiting the constituency again and again even during his uh, uh, defeat and afterwards so i think trishur is one possible constituency where uh, suresh gopi is contesting and bjp can bet on you know anil anthony if he wins or even if he is able to look like he is a winning candidate the equations in kerala are going to change drastically mark my words guys just watch that patanam titta how that plays out if anil anthony wins comfortably there that would mean that one community has decided that it is safer to put their fortunes with bjp if that happens you are going to have a very interesting mark in kerala come 2026 pinarayi vision could get wiped out let's see i'm this this is just my you know it's it's wanting it could be my heart not my head but that is one constituency i look very closely now let's take a look at the next item before we go to questions uh, sri kumar today uh, by the way guys yesterday i was talking to uh, uh, sri ram seshadri yesterday was in tamil the day before that was in english we were talking about it and i had asked him a hypothetical question but if you take money power out of the equation in tamil nadu how will the result change and the answer was that you know it can change dramatically and lo and behold today 2g square offices have been raided by enforcement directorate this was long time in coming and it has finally happened sri kumar we know it's just preliminary information at this point in time and that last time when in 2021 they raided uh, the son in law of stalin who is also very closely connected with 2g uh, g, uh, g square sabari san his house was raided by it but by the time they reached there no money was left so clearly they had already spread the money out g square offices raiding da- did ed think that poll election distribution money was in their offices because you will find them everywhere b b cities c cities a cities everywhere g square hoardings are all over the place no actually this uh, ed section uh, raiding the spare places uh, they are not new we all know that uh, during 2019 uh, one election which was uh, uh, which was stopped uh, it was postponed was vellur uh, for because for the simple reason that the money was found and was used by political parties so this was the first time in electoral history in india that one the voting of one constituency was stopped 
and it was postponed to a ne uh, next possible time possible date uh, because of the uh, unearthing of unaccounted cash in large numbers so that the uh, our agency election election commission and other uh, agency supporting the election commission they are feeling that this will impact or influence the voters similarly uh, after that that incident it became a habit of the investigating agency to uh, uh, to have raids in uh, in the such election time so that they feel this is the time where the movement of uh, the cash happens uh, because of our help for influencing voters and other things so we are still awaiting more information regarding this and we have to wait and see but what i personally feel is unlike last time uh, unlike the earlier times this time the impact and influence of cash will be limited uh, in tamil nadu election why i think so because for a two or three reasons one is the limited time first thing is uh, uh, all parties were caught off guard because the election for tamil nadu was announced in the first phase and it is about only 25 uh, days to come uh, 25 days left second thing is when there is a uh, unlike a wave election when it is a, a determined election that uh, uh, a person is going to come back to power like for example bjp is going to come back to power is a overall uh, opinion wide opinion tamil nadu is also not lagging behind the opinion tamil nadu also believes that yes modi is having a fair chance to come back to power so what it left for others parties like admk and dmk that they will be sitting in opposition so for sitting in opposition whether should they should spend money that also is there but how to uh, maintain their uh, uh, what political future that is also there so what i personally feel is a dmk is uh, it, they may feel but the, 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 they need not spend much money because for a simple reason the opposition is divided bjp and admk are divided even giving more money even without giving more money they can easily uh, uh, sail through in this election because of alliance arithmetic which is strongly in their favor admk on the other hand they are caught uh, you know jammed between the two sides one is bjp he having a strong prime ministerial face and dmk having good arithmetical Uh, position in their favor so this time i feel the usage of money will be comparatively less to any political party for 2024 well i hope your prophecy comes true because uh, money is really clearing the pitch for many people and and if you get disastrous consequences as a result uh, i've been uh, you know i've been visiting koi every 3 months and there is it's like an overgrown uh, village some very urban areas and rest are all pockets and and the access is, you know the roads get so terribly uh, you know bad in very short amount of time and there has been a flyover that has been under construction for several years now keep they keep saying oh 10 more pillars and we are through and we'll be able to do it it has still not been finished i'm hoping that annamalai makes that one of his planks in fact i'm hoping that he builds on on that that thing that has been laid down the pillars and say that okay i'm going to build another tier on top of that and make that as a metro uh it might be difficult for people to go up and down from there two levels to the ground but i think that is something that needs to be done you have to think a little bit outside the box coimbatore is the most entrepreneurial city in tamil nadu and if tamil nadu needs to grow and hit 1 trillion or 2 trillion it's easy for tamil nadu to do it than for other states because the entrepreneurship is already there karur is another entrepreneurs belt madurai lot of trading that happens for the rest of the southern india and uh, so there are lots of places like that and, uh, and in order to have that philip they need to have somebody like uh, annamale giving the vision and the impetus to drive these things so let's hope and see what happens let's take some questions now please Karthik MPS thank you so much for your sticker Vijay Kumar Srivastava want Srivastava wants to know sir uh, stalin still holding space abusing sanatan dharma 
Annamalai effect. Namaskar. It will happen so because that is one of their trademark. But during the time of election, you will feel that the Sanatam Dharma remarks will take a back burner because we all know that uh, during election time, any adverse remark by DMK against Sanatan Dharma will have a big impact, uh, not only for in Tamil Nadu, but also all India. So uh, we can all safely assume, at least until election is uh, completed, their uh, adverse remark in Sanatan, about Sanatana Dharma will not be there. Next one, please. Ajay Nagendra wants to know, what are the chances of Madhavi Lata against OAC? It will be a tough fight, but it's a minority dominated Lok Sabha seat. Yes, we already discussed this. Uh, again, it is a very difficult one. Because as I mentioned already, in from 1984, if I am not wrong, the family is continuously winning that seat, Hyderabad seat. Uh, now, OAC, before Mr. OAC, it was his father. Uh, so he he contested about six times and won the seat, and the present OVC is contesting about four times he has won the seat. So it is uh, difficult for uh, Lataji to win uh, Hyderabad, but for optics, narrative, and to increase vote share, it may be helpful. Next one, please. Uh, Ruben Loganathan wants to know: Is BJP proactive enough to counter all the lies, misinformation, false news allegations that will be thrown at it? by DMK throughout the campaign period. Usually, BJP is very slow. Yes, I also feel the so, but that was the case until 2021, uh, before the entry of Anomaly. We all know in 2019, the election which was swept by UPA, uh, at that time UPA, now it is India Alliance, it was main and mainly due to the misinformation, miscampaigning, and uh, uh, about, uh, we can say, it was a false campaign, narrative settings, but against BJP, against Prime Minister Modi uh, at that time. Even a smallest uh, municipal issue was attributed to Mr. Modi. A small uh, bore well where a child fell down, a private bore well, a child fell down and uh, passed away, unfortunately. That's, that was also attributed to Prime Minister Modi. They say that uh, uh, we are having so many scientific inventions. Why not have fix a uh, municipal borewell? He said the municipal borewell is uh, the, the life of the child is very important. Why why should we are spending so much money for defense and other things? Why not for uh, civic infrastructure like this? Without even realizing that it is a, a state government and it is a local body issue, but still it was the miscampaign was spread. So BJP was as you rightly mentioned the communication was very bad during 2019 and they left it as it is they allowed it as a free fall they they whatever they uh, abuse where they faced they 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 happily they accepted it without giving any uh, counter or uh, uh, counter arguments to it it was after anomaly who entered he uh, reputed he repeated each and every uh, allegations one by one which set the narrative and this is the first election I, I can see in 2024 where the DMK is lacking any narrative against BJP. For that reason, it is repeating its 2021 manifesto this time. Same need to is there, same petrol diesel uh, reduction is there, same freebie is being announced, curtailing of uh, governor's role, so many things, CAA, other issues were there. They were not able to give any single concrete new ideas in their present manifesto. That shows the DMK's narrative setting has taken a back foot. You know, um, before we go to the next question, Prashant Kishore said that BJP is going to get double digits in Tamil Nadu. What basis do you think he get that made that observation? Yes, the main observation is... Uh, BJP is a growing party, but unfortunately, until now, everyone is uh, agreeing for that except Tamil Nadu BJP. They themselves, they are not agreeing that they are growing. So they were very happy until uh, entry of anomaly or assuming of uh, state presidentship is state presidentship. They are very happy that BJP is a two percent, three percent party. 
and when the opposition and others were mocking at bjp that is uh, getting votes less than nota they were very happily taking it without giving any uh, concrete suggestion for the growth of the party to have a growth of a party bjp should contest alone to move away from the shadow of both the dravidian parties like a small sapling which cannot grow in the shadow of a very big tree because it lacks sunlight so bjp should move away from the big trees like the dravidian parties both dmk and idmk only then it can grow but the the state unit lacked the guts for doing so anomaly took it up that challenge his first uh, challenge was to to make equip the party mentally strong in such a way that it can contest the elections without the help of these two parties in which he has succeeded and we can see the, uh, uh, what to say mr prakash uh, sorry um, uh, Uh, he has uh, mr uh, i'm sorry uh, the uh, prashant kishore who has uh, predicted about double digit the main reason be from 2% earlier the bjp got around 5% in the local body election that is in the year 2022 uh, where it got around 5% election and how the vote percentage will increase is only if it contest large number of seats then only the percentage of votes will increase so bjp for the first time it is contesting about 19 seats with its own candidates and about four candidates with uh, its symbol but smaller parties so about 23 candidates it is contesting so it is likely to increase its can uh, from 5% to double the vote share anti incumbency against modi is not there because already there vote share was the anti incumbency was not at all visible at present in tamil nadu 2019 it was very much there and pmk that usually gets around 5% of votes uh, in uh, tamil nadu usually in its worst possible scenario pmk will get 5% of votes and other smaller parties including dinakaran tamil manila congress it may get about 2% of votes so totally this alliance partners alone will give around 7 to 8% of votes so bjp it will definitely touch about 12% of votes to max minimum 12% to 15% of votes so totally from 20 to 25% of votes the front can assume what is the backing of my prediction is there are so many small to big uh, uh, opinion polls which have taken place everywhere they have given from 13 to 14% of bjp till 17 to 18% this was before the announcement of the alliance now if we take the median range it will be definitely 15% and with the alliance partner it will cross 20% this is my basic uh, calculation but 20% won't win you seats though but if in concentrated areas it can win seats there are some places where bjp has uh, they will lack seats for example in delta region where no uh, not even bjp not even its alliance partners are strong enough in north there are but even in west there are some seats where bjp is strong say for example coimbatore tirupur one or two places but namakkal nilgiris we may not feel so south also dindigal we may not feel so but other places tutikorin we cannot say uh other places like tirunelveli virudhunagar kanyakumari will so so the uh, 20% we cannot we should not see it as in a holistic way in concentrated pockets bjp can win seats thank you so much next question from uh, karthik mps um is there sympathy way for dmk plus congress in tamil nadu because of kedriwal's arrest is that likely to influence the outcomes or bjp success let me tell me one let me tell you one thing kejriwal sarast is not giving a sympathy even in delhi forget about tamil nadu <laughs> because the people uh, i should say one thing uh, the parties like congress or bjp look at it their genesis congress it started its career from uh, freedom struggle and other things then it reinvented from uh, congress wo or and then indira congress and like that bjp from jansang and its ideology think about arvind kejriwal aam aadmi party 
it started its politics political career from the ngo the sorry the non political org, movement called india against corruption and where he landed it from india against corruption formation of a political party landing itself into a corruption scandal that too in a liquor policy which was uh, against anna hazare's uh, uh, you know objectives so uh, the person who has landed himself in jail uh, does not deserve any sympathy rightly so and uh, even in voters also they are uh, of the same opinion i believe next question please Subramanian Vishwanathan wants to know, uh, Shri Kumar, how many seats NDA will win in your assessment? Any chances of creating history in uh, era Vengaya land? I don't know what that means. He meant to erode, I believe. Okay. <laughs> because uh, EVR used to say Vengaya. Oh, right, right, right. So EVR's birthplace is erode. So he meant to erode, if I am assuming it right. Uh, I don't think uh, erode uh, BJP will alliance will win because they have given it a seat to uh, Tamil Manila Congress. Uh, seats are concerned, I, as I mentioned earlier, Trinal Valley is a good possible seat. Even Dr. Subramanya Sami also predicted that uh, Nainar Nagendran will win today uh, in, a, in a press conference he told. And uh, another one is uh, Vellur is a good seat. I, I say that it's all fighting chance. I don't say there are winning chances. Winning chances, there are about two to three seats, not beyond that. Trinal Valley is one such seat. Uh, Vellur is another seat. Coimbatore uh, is one seat. Uh, there are about two to three seats. Other three to five or four seats are a fighting chance. We should see how it goes. Because now it is like a three-way contest. And we can assume it is a four-way contest also. Or even Kanyakumari also, we can say. So the four-way contest, non tamilar we should see how much votes they get about uh, if they cross about 5 to 7% of votes how the voters are going to react last time there were there was amma makkal munnetra kadagam by dinakaran that split about many votes in south tamil nadu now it is with bjp makkal nidhi mayam attracted many floating voters now that floating voters they could be disenchanted with uh, kamala hasan they could vote in another way. And BJP will get more votes. So uh, we should see all those things. Presently, three to four seats, BJP alliance campaign. Kenny is a good seat where Dinakaran may win the seat. OPS has a good chance in Ramanathapuram because uh, being a star candidate, he is a, a former chief minister also, and a division of votes will get him that seat. So we should see. Thank you, sir. Next question, please. Um, Sivanandan wants to know, Vanakam Gurus asks, sir, will BJP Annamalai win Kovai seat because media are all tall, dark story only about BJP? Yeah, B, uh, it's uh, Koyambathur is one good seat. Uh, the one advantage about BJP is BJP has continuously contested that seat from 1998. Two times it won. 98, 99 it won. But it contested continuously even thereafter, 2004, 2009, 2014, 2019. So even within, in alliance also, without alliance also, it was in continuous electoral field. So we should see. One difference is also in Coimbatore from 98 till 2019, only CP Radhakrishnan was a candidate. For the first time, Coimbatore is seeing a different BJP candidate. So Annamale has a good chance. They should do a good micromanagement to win the seat because there is every possibility there could be a tactical voting between DMK and IDMK at the last minute. Possibilities are there. So, Annamalai should be very much aware to uh, break this uh, jinx by uh, doing much more micromanagement, at least to get the votes to 45%. Uh, so, if the, he does so, he can succeed. Next one, please. Anand Devarajan wants to know, will at least the voters from Coimbatore refrain from getting lowered by the election money, Sri Kumarji? Coimbatore is very much part of Tamil Nadu. So it cannot go anything outside the grammar of Tamil Nadu politics. But yes, they may opt for a good candidate. 
because very rarely we can feel we can see uh, in politics uh, we will get good candidates as mr shri ayer rightly pointed out about mr sridharan so very because now he has grown old so very rarely we can get such type of candidates people will be yearning for getting such type of candidates and when they get that candidate they may defeat them also which may take another big gap for uh, now the constituency or the people to get another type of another such person so it is a, a good thing that anomaly is contesting it is for the uh, it's for the welfare of the people it for the betterment of the people to make use of this opportunity next one please thank you aryan arya for your generous donation thank you ranjit lala facts and fiction wants to know shri ji um is it true that when the bjp contests in kerala the congress and left traditional ruling opposition party come to a tactical alliance yes yeah, i was part of one show in newsx where uh, i think the the candidate who lost to that remember that name of constituency same exact thing o rajagopal's victory that day i was on the panel on newsx and the guy who lost that party i don't remember his ldf or uh, udf he was accusing the other side you did not keep your word you did not tactically vote open national tv the guy is jumping up and down so this is not this is not <laughs> this is a fact guys they do this all the time see i had one time cornered uh, my good friend tg mohandas and i asked him you know you guys say that you guys pride yourself as a 100% literacy rate <laughs> and then you go and do tactical voting <laughs> and he said it is because we are literate that we can do this <laughs> the whole thing got flipped by him so <laughs> look vote is something that is special you deserve what you vote i mean if you vote badly you are going to get bad governance that's all i can say uh, i i'll let you answer the question sri kumar yes coming to mr rajagopal o rajagopal i still remember his uh, press statement after his victory in 2016 uh, he told that uh, mr ak antony used to mock at him if you want to come to assembly tamil nadu sorry kerala assembly i will arrange a visitor pass for you so that you can come <laughs> so now after the victory uh, o rajagopal said i no longer uh, need a visitor pass i have a pass of a member of a general uh, the legislative assembly which can i can rightly walk in as a member so of a member of namum constituency so it was uh, i i still cherish that uh, you know press conference which is very significant you know because uh, moments uh, rarely we get uh, in uh, politics so we should cherish yes, and indeed. we should remember those uh, moments yes indeed next question please uh, balaji c wants to know can you tell a little bit about the following constituencies any quick birds eye view analysis on these pollachi shri k vasantarajan nagapattinam shri sgm ramesh pollachi uh, and nagapattinam they are difficult constituencies because they are uh, pollachi is okay it's a kongu constituency i believe there is a person called vasantarajan who is contesting for on behalf of bjp and nagapattinam is a traditionally a delta constituency by left party cpi used to contest from there so both are uh, difficult for bjp but they can increase the votes nagapattinam uh, bjp for the first time it is uh, contesting i believe so they can increase the votes um next one please Oh wow, that's interesting. S. G. M. Ramesh is son of a latest late communist leader. Interesting. We'll we'll follow yeah. that constituency yes. next week. We'll come back. Next question, please. Sanjay Shiva wants to know: Will D. M. D. K. one year vote move to A. D. M. K., making them a stronger force slash vote splitter? I oh, think DMDK this guy is a nayakar, right? Uh, oh, one second. Uh, Vijay Kant was a nayakar. So where is the one year here? Yes, Go ahead. he is a linguistic minority uh, it's not about pandiyar as you rightly mentioned he is belongs to linguistic minority community so but the real irony is after the demise of uh, mr jaykant that uh, 
votes percentage have considerably reduced of uh, that party and uh, it doesn't matter whether it, uh, uh, it transfers the votes or not to, to towards admk but uh, slowly but steadily the dmdk lost its relevance because I, again i tell you there is an ample space for a third alternative in tamil nadu against the dravidian parties earlier it was congress later after congress after a very very long time bjp is now testing its waters now if the bjp is doing it for the one one time uh, achievement one time scenario then again it will be back to square one so it has to sustain that bjp needs to sustain the momentum of alternative politics for the next two to three elections then the people of tamil nadu will get convinced and they will get you more votes this is for uh, bjp as far as dmdk it, it did it started its uh, politics like that so it it captured around 8 to 10% of votes then the time it went again with an alliance with uh, admk it uh, its grass started growing down you know uh, this guy is an amazing individual vijay khan his first movie he acted he acted as the brother of rajini khan now they have facial resemblance now when they were shooting some of the scenes this guy was doing such a good acting that rajini khan <laughs> the rest of the group cut out his role he did, he he was out of that movie and his big one i remember correctly if i remember correctly was there was a movie called sattam oru irittarai that i think uh, was the was a breakout film for vijay khan of course chinna gounder is a class apart so um, very nice individual he did a lot of things unfortunately now that party i think has faded away we'll see how it goes next one sunil nayar wants to know will arresting kejriwal have a negative impact for bjp these people get carried away by his crocodile tears and victim card no they will not because uh, every people of uh, delhi they always uh, they didn't share that much uh, sympathy for kejriwal because at the time of this agitation scheme this aam aadmi party were in the forefront of those agitations and they stopped the traffic so i can even see the people distributing sweets especially for kejriwal uh, arrest and uh, the time uh, he was arrested i don't saw any a voluntary uh, eruption of uh, you know fear, uh, anger or uh, you know agitations like that it was very much an orchestrated agitations by a couple of uh, aam aadmi people and a, a one bus full of people and they didn't carry much sympathy that what i could observe in uh, uh, delhi next question please thought provocateur wants to know can the people of south look beyond freebies which is where the real transformation will start i will not uh, uh, say it as a freebie is restricted to tamil nadu or south india alone even if we see what happened in himachal pradesh congress announced the old pension scheme people fell in for that and what about uh, other states but we should all appreciate that uh, the states like tripura even if it is a comparatively a, no a northeastern states there also congress and communist came together they announced the old pension scheme people of tripura rejected that and they elected a party they elected bjp again uh, for developmental politics because bjp didn't assured any old pension scheme which is a cost to the exchequer so uh, we should all appreciate that there are eastern states and northeastern states uh, which have voted on a real issue and uh, the freebie culture is not restricted to tamil nadu south india of course it is more in south india i should say thank you so much srikumar and viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel we'll be mm -hmm. back next week taking a look at it srikumar also will be joining us in hindi on wednesdays and and do tune in for that one too srikumar thank you so much and he also is on wednesdays on uh, tamur also so this, he he comes three times a week on three gurus channels thank you so much sir namaskar thank you sir namaskar jai Thank <music> you.